We're back in the Slater Rock Shop working on the old Ranger again. And and I want to start this video just by saying I'd rather push a Chevrolet than drive a Ford. But I wouldn't get out of the electric chair to drive a Volkswagen. I can tell you that right now. But I'd, I'd take a Dodge. I'd drive a Dodge. In fact, you might even get a guy to hold your hand, you know, if you, if you got a Dodge truck. So that's comforting to know. But we've got the old thing stuffed in here. And uh, I've cut down a manifold off the Suburban. S sliced it right there so my buddy Mitch, he can weld air. So I'll take it down to Wild Hair. He'll put this thing in the oven, get this cast hot, shove it back on here, and he'll weld a pot with that and have it twist out here. We're going to have it on the outside of the frame over there. Got some trans cooler lines put on and got the factory harness put on. Um, pretty much used everything I could use off of that Suburban. Anything and everything. Got the wiring harness, engine, water pump, accessories. So if you're doing LS swap, get a donor. Don't just get the motor because then when you have to buy the bracket and the pump and the water pump and the intake and the harness and the computer, it gets real pricey. So, so get everything out of your donor truck if you can. We got our fuel tank and this is just a regular old EFI Ranger fuel tank for like an 86 model. This was originally carbureted. It was an 83 model, but it fits in nice. And we're going to use this hanger right here to put a Chevrolet pump on. So we'll have a Chevy pump sitting down there inside. Hadn't put it in yet, but I've got it. I've got it here. And I want to give a little shout out to my buddy Matt for hooking me up with some used F-350 rear shocks. Um, the Ram Charger was a budget build. And I had shocks for the Ranger laying right over there. So I just took them out of the package. I said, I think this will work on the Ram Charger. And it did, it worked perfect on the Ram Charger and the same shocks worked perfect on the Ranger. So I got them put on the Ranger. They're looking pretty, pretty nice, pretty beefy. I think they'll, they'll hold up the old one ton Super Duty Ranger pretty well. I've also, uh, I saw this online, so I figured I'd make some of my own instead of buying them. There's little, uh, ABS sensors, they turn them into Zerk fittings on these Super Duty axles. So I cut it down and, and threaded it and put me a little Zerk fitting in there. Cause these hubs are really expensive. So if you can keep them greased, they'll last a lot longer. So got that in there and it's, it ain't no big deal to do. Just drill through it and put your little tap in there and, and uh, put your Zerk fitting in. Got that done and, and uh, Logan, if you're watching, If I'd have just brought those straps to Tennessee, we wouldn't have been in that dilemma. But I said, oh, I'll, I'll never need those. That drive shaft, it'll never fling out. But it did. And, and Danner, I know I said I was going to get the slip yoke eliminator, but I just, man, that's $400. And I'm looking at that, and I'm like, man, I think the angle's not that steep. So we're going to try just a regular shaft. I mean, it's good enough for my 2500 HD truck. I think it'll be good enough for this. We got the pinion angle looking decent back here. And even the T-case has got a little slope downward. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll work. But if it doesn't, it won't be the first time I've built something the drive shaft's thrown out of. So, so what, what's new? Just to save a few dollars, we're going to just keep it like that. And hopefully... We'll be able to keep up with Stokes' old Toyota truck, but but that's a that's a tall order right there. So we're gonna throw some brakes on tonight, finish up with a few lines over there, and hopefully we'll be getting the cab back on her for the last time. <laughs> 